Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending upon when you're watching this video. Good whatever time signature is appropriate. Today I want to do a, a simple uh, differential equation, but it gives us much insight into how we set up many, many differential equations. So let's just consider this uh, problem. From a helicopter that's at, say, 3,000 feet, you throw a baseball straight down. How fast will that baseball be traveling when it reaches the ground? Now, here's some things that we know. Before we throw the baseball, relative to the ground, the baseball is traveling at zero feet per second. I mean, it's just at the same altitude all the time. It's just in a helicopter flying along at 3,000 feet. But certainly as it leaves the helicopter, it's going to be changing its velocity or speed. Uh, velocity is really a vector quantity with a direction as well as a magnitude. Speed is the word we use for the magnitude of the velocity. So why I bring that up because we see that there's going to be a change in velocity and a change in velocity is, is acceleration. So I want to consider the acceleration of this baseball and, and break it into component parts. And so I know that one component part is the acceleration due to gravity. Due to gravity. And we know that near the uh, surface of the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity, Galileo convinced us that that does not depend upon the mass of an object the acceleration due to gravity is symbolized by a lowercase g in the imperial system 32 feet per second squared and that would be in a downward direction but there are other forces acting upon this baseball as we throw it there's also a force of air resistance, and I'll just put a little AR on there, a force of air resistance. And we're not going to derive this today, but from physics we know that the air resistance for a slow moving object like a, like a baseball being thrown by hand is going to be proportional to the velocity. The faster the baseball goes, the more air resistance there is. And we can, uh, as usual, we can make this into an equation if we would supply a constant of proportionality, so k v. We also can observe, and we might as well take this into a, account right now, that the force of air resistance is going to be retarding the, the movement of the baseball and the force of gravity is going to be uh, adding to the velocity of the baseball. So these two have to be opposite in direction and algebraically that's going to mean we want them opposite in sign. And so I'm going to stick a negative in here so that these forces, that just gives it their vector forces, that just tells us or orients us to a direction. And we could reverse all those directions if we, if we wanted to with no ill effect. But right now we're going to take uh, gravity uh, acting downward and the uh, resistance to movement through the air is acting, is acting upward. All right, so now this is a, f a force that we've reckoned over here. But we know from Newton's laws of motion that force is equal to mass times acceleration. And so therefore, acceleration, that's what we were looking for, acceleration air resistance would be equal to the force of air resistance divided by the mass of the object. So let's do this one more time. The acceleration due to air resistance would be equal to negative kV, that's the force but divided by the mass. 
Now the mass of the baseball is not going to be changing. So I see that I've got a constant of proportionality and I've got the mass of the baseball and their ratio is going to be constant. Their ratio will not be changing. And so I could write this as K just temporarily. I'm going to put a little 2 on there for you and times the velocity. So the acceleration of the uh, baseball that's caused by air resistance is equal to the negative of a constant times the velocity of the baseball. Now, if I want to get the total acceleration on this baseball, then I would say that, well, that looks like a D. I meant to write acceleration A. I would say that, that our acceleration is the vector sum of these two, so this would be G, and then add on a negative KV. Now I just put that 2 on there temporarily to remind you or to explain to you that this is a constant, but it's not the constant we started with here. It's the constant divided by M, still just a, just a constant. And it's not an arbitrary constant. It's a constant that's determined by forces of nature here. More about that in just a second. Now what is acceleration? Well, acceleration is the time rate of change. And so dV dt would be equal to g minus kV. That is, v prime is equal to g minus kV. Take a deep breath. Okay. Now, what do we know here? Well, we, we know that this is a, a first order differential equation. The question was, how fast will it be going when it reaches the ground? So we'd be looking for a V that satisfies this differential equation. V equals a solution to this differential equation. It's a first order differential equation. We know how to solve linear first, uh, we know how to solve variable separable first order differential equations, but this one's not variable separable. So I can't get the dv's and the v's all on the left hand side and everything else on the right hand side. Can't do that. Algebraically, that uh, can't be done. So we're at a loss as to how to solve this, but we're not at a loss as to how to get much, much more insight into the answer to the original question. And this would be a second example, gave you one last week, but a second example of how a graph of, of the slope field could come to our aid here. Now before we go to the slope field, let's note that that uh, G is 32 feet per second squared. And let's note also that K, this constant of proportionality, we know this from physics, K depends upon the shape of the object, That is, what kind of shapes could we have? Well, an object could be a, a teardrop, it could be a, a sphere, it could be a flat, like a sheet of paper falling through the air, it could be, uh, oh, I don't know, what other shapes are there? I mean, it could be a rhombus or uh, any, any other kind of thing, but, but shape and cross-sectional area. These are two of the main components, physical components, that will determine the value of K. For a baseball, that's a sphere, and, uh, you know, is it a hard ball or a soft ball? Well, it didn't say, I assume a hard ball, but a hard ball is, I'll bet one of you are a baseball player that would know exactly what the diameter is. I don't know, but it, uh, let's see, from memory, uh, 
two and a half inches or so for a for a hardball. But in any case, it's been given to us in this problem or calculated for us that k would be uh, a, a good value for k would be 0.16. So that would do for k. So that gives me then v prime is equal to 32 minus 0.16 v. Now let's bring in the slope field generator and see what that looks like if we bring in a slope field generator. Now I, I've already uh, taken a peek at this. So you can see that in the slope field generator we've been playing with, we've got dy dt is, I put the equation in already, is 32 minus 0.16y. And I'm going to look at the slope field as x varies between 0 and 180. x would be a time axis, and so that would be 180 seconds. And y would be the velocity axis. And I'm I'm just I've chosen y between zero and 500 uh, feet per second would be the would be the units there. Well, we can look at this slope field, and we can see that if our initial velocity, this is a velocity axis, was was up here somewhere, say 400. Well, what what's it going to be doing? Look at these slopes. These slopes are are negative, very negative, but as we move this way they're less negative, less negative, less negative, still negative, but they get down here and they turn from negative slope to positive slope right at 200. So if we would start this baseball with an initial velocity, toss of our arm, an initial velocity above the 200, this says the baseball is going to slow down with time until it reaches 200, but then it's going to be incapable of moving up or down. If it tries to move up a little bit, these slopes are going to push it down. If it tries to fall down a little bit, these slopes are going to push it, push it up. And so it's going to ask them, the solution is going to asymptotically approach 200. Now that doesn't, that's a, a judgment looking at the slope field that's independent of what the initial velocity is. Let's just try some initial velocity. Now suppose that uh, you're an average kind of person and you can throw a baseball, not like a pro pitcher who can throw it 100 miles an hour, but maybe you can throw it at, at uh, 60 miles per hour. Now really I've picked 60 because I, I remember that 60 miles per hour is 88 feet per second. We need to be constant with our units here and we've used for the acceleration due to gravity 32 feet per second squared. So we're in feet per second here for units on velocity. So if I would, would uh, explore a solution to the differential equation where my initial value at time zero was what I could put on that ball as I threw it and maybe 88 feet per second. Well, let's submit that and see what the solution curve would look like. So 88 would be over here. And as we move a little bit to the right on the time, I see that my slopes are, are very steep and so I'm going to be increasing rapidly. But as I move further and further, <clears throat> to the right, further and further in time, my slopes are going to be still increasing, but the rate of increase, that is the, the uh, well, we call this the slope, don't we? The slope of this direction field is, is decreasing slightly until I get up to 200, and then it's horizontal, and so I'm going to stay at 200. So if I initially threw that ball at 88 feet per second, it would speed up until it got to 200 feet per second, and then it looks like it's in stasis. Well, yeah, we call this terminal velocity. 
And so a, a baseball, if I had just dropped it, would reach a terminal velocity. If I didn't give it any, any initial throw, it would reach a terminal velocity if, if it falls long enough. That's why we started this thing at 3,000 feet, so we'd have plenty of time for the baseball to fall. If I was firing it from a cannon and could maybe get an initial velocity of 300, feet per second. A human being can't throw a baseball that fast, but we could fire it out of a mechanical device. I'd get a solution that looks like this. I would start at 300 feet per second, but here the baseball is going to be slowing down. Slowing, slowing, slowing until the air resistance and the acceleration due to gravity give me accelerations that are equal but opposite in sign which means that I don't have an acceleration anymore. What's an acceleration? A change in velocity. So my velocity is constant and it's not changing anymore because what would make it go faster is balanced by what would make it go slower. And so I can see all that and I can learn all that from the slope field without ever being able to solve the differential equation. Now very shortly we're going to learn how to solve this differential equation so if I forget, remind me when we learn how to solve linear first order equations to come back to this problem and, and we'll solve it and see if the solution that we arrive at kind of agrees with the conclusions we've reached using the slope field. But uh, that's, a, that's enough for this problem. That's enough for today. I hope you've learned something and we'll be able to use what you've learned in working homework problems and in future uh, studies of differential equations. Okay, so have a good, uh, what, rest of the morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever.